capital on the move. Riyadh is a city of phenomenal growth, an expanding economy and a rapidly changing skyline. Eye-catching modern developments line the roads around the centre. But among the hectic pace of the 21st century, you can pause and discover corners of how life used to be in the kingdom. Very, 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 very good. Riyadh is a city that has mushroomed from 150,000 to 5 million people in 60-odd years. But one thing remains constant, bartering. This is an auction in the old market. One nine and he's put me off. One nine, oh, 1978, yeah. 78. 78, OK, yeah. thank you. <laughs> Under the hammer is everything from antique coffee pots to air rifles. The auction is held in the old marketplace, or souk, a relic of the past in a fast-evolving city. In Riyadh's rush for modernity, much of the old town was lost. But recent decades have seen a renewed interest in the city's architectural heritage, and outstanding examples are now carefully preserved. Among them is Mazmak Fort, where King Abdulaziz, founder of modern Saudi Arabia, first staked his claim to power. Meticulously restored, the fort is now open to the public. From time to time I come and get my kids along with me so that they see the history and they appreciate the efforts. At least they would start thinking what they should do for their future. Another survivor is the original palace of the king, now the centerpiece of an historic district which includes the National Museum. We have uh, ignored our history, we have ignored enough our, our uh, traditions, and now it's time to go back and refurbish it and, and bring back as much as we can history back to that part of the city. It doesn't mean that you should have it as a museum where you can touch, no, you have to refurbish it in a sense that you keep the old in, in sync with the modern needs. During its rapid expansion of the mid-20th century, Riyadh developed along American lines, with sprawling blocks set between grid-like streets. Planners view the car as king. I, I think th this is an international problem. Th there is a, a sudden jump from the, uh, the compact traditional city. And only when the city grew, then we realized that this is not what we wanted to have. In the 1980s, the Ariad Development Authority began a series of large-scale projects designed to humanize the city with car-free plazas, green space and architecture that better reflected the culture and the climate. Sometimes people don't know what they want. You have to give an experiment, then listen to people how they react to. So the first few experiments showed us that how much people crave the, the public space now I think Riyadh is uh, becoming a very rich city for people to live in. Now the car's status in a congested city is set to be challenged. A new metro system with six lines covering 176 kilometers is being built from scratch to take the strain off the roads. This project I think will, will change the whole lifestyle of people because the project will be uh, a very good organizer of their life and their activities. When you're using your car, you don't know when you're going to arrive, so you are, you are saving the time of, of everybody. The futuristic metro stations will take their place alongside Riyadh's iconic buildings, like the 99-story Kingdom Tower. In the shopping center on the lower floors, you can buy anything from electronics to perfumes, or consider a glittering gift but you'll need more than a million euros to get this diamond wrapped. There's also the chance to take in a stunning view. And when you come to the top of Kingdom Tower, you can get a real sense of how Riyadh has developed and how it is continuing to look to the future. Next time in Saudi Arabian life, we meet the students who are studying for their future here in Riyadh. That's on Euronews.